Well, hello. Still don't have a name for this thing, but um, uh, right now we're gonna do a tour of a decommissioned school bus. So I know everybody does tours about like what they did to it, and everybody's like, wow, oh my gosh. But there's also a lot of people who don't know what to expect from a school bus, how it operates. So between me and Michael, uh, Navigation Nowhere yeah. on Instagram, I'm sure that we can basically point out every single thing to this bus. Um, should we start inside? Yeah, yeah, Kay. if you want to. Let's do it. I guess we'll start first with the seat because I just realized that I have an air ride seat. So to, in order to know if you have an air ride, you're gonna see an air cushion thing down under the seat. And I believe that only the buses with air ride suspension would have an, or air brakes uh, would have an air seat. So that means like if it's a Ford E450, E350, some kind of Chevy or something like that, if you have air brakes and a, you know, you hear the air, you know, uh, whistle or pss, you know, when, when you're operating it, it's gonna be on the heavier chassis buses, the full size chassis. Uh, so that's the first thing for me that was new. Um, and then of course, another thing, so this is the air brake release. Uh, another thing that you should know is that the buses with air brakes, or maybe it's just the, the large chassis buses, do you see something here? A little weird? Yeah, there's no park. So maybe Michael knows the reason for that. Uh, well, you don't need a park. Because <laughs> the, uh, the air brake, uh, when you pull, pull the little yellow tab here, it, uh, it's going to lock lock the tire, so there's no need for a, an actual brake in the, the transmission or anything. Okay, there we go. So besides that, everything is kind of straightforward except for some of the gauges. Uh, over here is transmission temperature, uh, battery amps, uh, uh, engine uh, oil, the, the, the pressure, the PSI, because this is a high pressure oil system. Uh, look that up if you don't know what it is. We have the water, you know, coolant temperature, regular RPMs and miles per hour, uh, normal fuel, uh, fuel and uh, voltage. And then up here, this is a little new if you're coming from a passenger vehicle. This is your air uh, gauge and it lets you know the pressure. So I emptied the tanks, that's why we're in the red zone. Um, besides that, on the left hand side, some of these things are marked and some of them may be worn, as you can see here heated mirrors, uh, rear heater, things like that. These are some of the school bus um, buttons, so if you press like the master flash, actually I have to have the ignition turned, I think. Um, but once you start pressing some of these buttons, there we go, like, you know, the stop sign, you know, flips out, all that. So um, I'm not a pro at these things. Michael knows more about that than I do. But some things are pretty basic. Here's your headlight switch. Here's your wiper switch. Here's your fan. And the best part. Which connects to that. Don't forget the best part. What's that? That? Oh, cruise control. I know. <laughs> I got cruise control on this bad boy. And by the way, I said in a previous video it was a 2002. I was incorrectly told that it was a 2002. It was actually incorrect on my sales agreement that it was a 2002. It's a 2003. The engine manu manufa was manufactured in late 02, which uh, the whole thing is at 03. So besides the things that I pointed out, Michael, do you want to walk us through some other things that you know? Because you're more familiar with the big buses than I am. Yeah. Uh, what, do you still want to stick in the cockpit? Do you want to... Yeah, we can move our way backward. Yeah. If there's something I skipped. No, you know. I don't think so. Um... Okay. I mean, moving back to this model, you have the emergency door, um, or the handicap door, and then you have an emergency door over here, which yep. you won't find in every model bus. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned uh, the Jersey buses don't have uh, yeah. emergency doors, right? Yeah, it depends on state, so a lot of times you have to look at state regulations. So, uh, I'm from the East Coast, so New Jersey, you probably won't find emergency doors, but in New York State, you will, because there's uh, state laws that require uh, side emergency doors or handicap doors in all their buses. So if you're looking for a bus and you don't want a you know a handicap rail, then you know you got to look for a state uh, where the bus was made or where it's being used, and you you won't find uh, one of these. So I'm guessing this bus was in Washington. So I'm guessing this state uh, has something to do with yeah. Uh, I, I'm, and also these sorts of like regulations and stuff refer to uh, once you pass a certain amount of capacity, then you have to have one because it wouldn't make sense to have a, 
uh, an emergency door like this on a on a little Ford E450, which yeah. holds like you know yeah, usually, 15 people. It's usually just big chassis buses. Yeah. Yeah. So um, also something uh, different from state to state. You see how wide this is. Um, this is like a two-seater on each side. The previous bus I had three and three. That's also a state regulation. Um, besides that, you guys have the normal kind of rubber tread. I highly recommend that everyone, if you do a conversion, rip this stuff out. It smells like my childhood. Ugh, the smell of this rubber is nasty. Uh, you'll have a back door. If the key is in the ignition and you open this, it's going to make a buzzer sound. Obviously, I don't right now. Um... But, you know, normal kind of roof. We got lucky with the screws. Yeah. Here's an emergency exit. The last bus I had didn't have one on the roof at all. So, uh, now from a construction standpoint, anything you want to point out? Uh, biggest thing with buses are wheel wells. You got to build around them. So you have to figure out what you're going to do with them. So either got to hide them in a cabinet, uh, hide them in a bathroom, you know, or... Uh, I don't know, use them in your design somehow. I've, I've never done that. I've usually just hide them in cabinets and stuff. But mm -hmm. besides that, I mean, we're going to gut this thing all the way down. We're going to take all the sheet metal out, all the, you know, all the seats and everything, get it down to the bare exterior metal and, you know, start building back from there. So yeah. this bus will not look the same within like, I don't know, I guess a few, a few days of gutting. Not even. It'll take <laughs> us like probably a day and a half. <laughs> okay. So uh, wheel well right here, uh, as Michael mentioned, and then... Uh, the windows are all kind of a standard size. Now, in the back, we have one that's bigger, but uh, I don't quite know the reason for that unless you do. Yeah, I think it's sure. a design thing, but yeah. there's a certain standard kind of size. There's metal that goes all the way up and all the way over to the other side. So once this is ripped out, you'll see. Um, like an airplane, if you think uh, the ribs of an airplane, same thing. For all you airplane mechanics, yeah, you'll know what he's talking about. Um, but yeah, um, this we might be modifying, might be adding windows, who knows, that's a bit down the way. But um, yeah, so seats are bolted in, there's a nut under the frame, uh, so you know, there's that to deal with. So other things to expect, uh, wear and tear, <laughs> there's definitely going to be some wear and tear. However, if you totally got the thing out, uh, it doesn't really matter anyways. Um, Oh, the rear heater. We, uh, oh, yeah. You didn't look at that. So Rear heater. Yeah, so, buses. Michael, do you want to talk about the rear heater? Sure, yeah. In a lot of buses, you're going to find uh, these heaters down here. They're going to be somewhere typically behind the, the wheel well. Um, that runs off the coolant in the engine, and it's pumped to the back of the bus so that uh, you know you can get heat for the kids inside the bus. But uh, there's uh, actually coolant lines, which you can see running along the side channels all the way to the front. Um, we're going to be pulling that out, I believe. You wanted the, you're going to use a, a diesel heater, right? So we're going to be pulling that out, but uh, you can keep them and use them. I've seen people do it in bus conversions mm -hmm. so that when you're driving, you know, you can just flip the switch and get heat, you know, things like that. Yeah, and the reason, the reason why it is a coolant heater, uh, essentially the coolant's already hot and the bus is only powering a 12-volt fan back there, so it's very efficient and it can also bring the temperature of the bus down by dissipating some of the heat. So if you were in an overheating situation, you could flip on the heaters and that's how it goes. But basically you're just blowing air through a, a hot uh, radiator uh, and that's generating heat for the kids. So um, what else can we talk about here? Seat belts or maybe lack of seat belts. Yeah. Seat belts, uh, as you can see, there's a built-in child seat. But the seat belts are built into the actual seats. Uh, up in the front on the full-size chassis, um, seat belt goes into the wall comes across like so yep. um, and because it's an air seat you have uh, latches on the uh, latches on the seat um, and this prevents when you're you're bouncing on the seat uh, it doesn't keep um, the seat from kind of like bouncing out so if you were to actually get in uh, a seat with a suspension you if you have air on the bus you can switch it over to an air seat but you would have to add these tie straps into the seat um, to be able to do the full conversion otherwise you're I mean your seats just gonna fly around. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. That's good to know. So essentially, uh, don't take these out if you, if you do have an air seat yeah. is yeah, what no. I'm gathering. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see. Other features here. Horn is the same. <laughs> um, blinker and uh, uh, bright light uh, flasher. This one's a little loose, so we might be replacing that. Um, I, on this model door compared to the last one, I have a 
uh, air powered uh, door. So there's an arrow that points this way, so that's closed. If I were to switch it, while there's either air in the tank or when the engine is on, that's how the door will operate. So you just hit that uh, and then it opens. And then there's an on off switch for the air door, which is automatic and manual. But besides that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, air brakes, if you've never driven a vehicle with <laughs> air brakes, oh boy, you're in for a treat. <laughs> They were very sensitive. Actually, Michael could probably tell us why they're so uh, sensitive. Oh, I mean, I'm not too sure the difference between hydraulic, like the actual difference uh, between hydraulic and air brakes, actually. I mean, yeah. I know that uh, when I drive my bus for so long and I go back to a car, I put my uh, family members or friends into the drive into the dashboard because I'm not used to the braking <laughs> systems. I mean, air brakes are just, you just, I mean, I think when you first drove it, you tap it and you just go yeah. flying. I mean, you got to be real soft with them. Yeah. Um, I'd imagine, I mean, I don't know if you know, I'd probably do a compression of air versus liquid. You know, something something mm -hmm. to do with that. Uh, yeah, it's they're very uh, sensitive and, and very, very powerful. This bus uh, is almost twice what my last bus weighed. Uh, this thing is about 16,000 pounds. So, but it can also stop on a dime. I kid you not. Um, so that's how powerful the air brakes are. I'm um, just kind of looking around here. Um, also, there's a couple different heating options in the front. There's something coming out of here. I don't know how to operate it yet. Uh, there's another one there. Uh, that's operated from the from the little dash thing over here, I believe. I think it's for door entry. Anyways, I'm still getting the getting familiar with this thing. You know who could if uh, if we can't figure out and give you guys any information, you know who could answer it. Badge. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> also, something a little bit different from the vehicle. Um, I ha I got myself an adapter. This is uh, it, it to read the engine. Uh, this is an OBD2 uh, port here. But what I had to do is I had to plug it into a nine pin connector. And let's see if I can get that out. I don't know. Um, it is a different kind of port on this thing. Uh, I don't know which way it goes, so I'm not going to rip it out. But anyways, I got an adapter because I'll be using the OBD2 port uh, to read the engine and things like that. So um, that's something to note. Ooh, another thing is there is no front locking mechanism. So Michael suggested uh, adding a simple uh, combination lock and then one of these... Uh, I don't know, what is it, a little latch, latch or something? Yeah, yeah so we're, we have a little latch that's going to go across the bottom. Um, but if you're, in, if you're inside the bus, though, a lot of times people want to put locks on the inside, which you can do, but if you leave the door on manual, a lot of times what I do is just turn the air lock on, and uh, the air tanks will hold the air. So throughout the night, my, my uh, doors are actually held closed by uh, air rather than an actual locking system on my bus. Interesting. Which is an option. If cool. You, all right, let's jump outside uh, to see what we can expect from a school bus. Now, if you are lucky enough to get a nice, clean bus like me, you will be able to clearly and cleanly see the frame with no rust flakes chipping off anywhere. There's really only just a little bit of rust on um, the drum brake, and then a little bit on the turbo. That is from heat. That will happen no matter where you are. And a little bit on the exhaust headers, which you can't get a clear view from uh, from this angle but just take my word for it they're down there they're a little rusty it's from the heat and then I think we have a little rust on either the water pump in the front or the uh, the fan right there the connecting part of the fan uh, besides that it is pretty clean um, I mean I've seen tens of buses I mean a lot of buses at this point in my life and this is by far, if it shows up on film or not, the cleanest bus I have ever seen. So, not a bad purchase, <laughs> even though if you guys saw the other video, there was a little weird thing about price. Uh, something to note, uh, but school, all school buses should have these uh, bubble lights on the front. That is actually, I think, made to see if any kids like run in front of the bus while the bus is stopped. For us, I use it to see if I'm going to hit anything when I'm turning it, uh, it to anything close. It's going to come with a front... Uh, I don't know, what would you call it? A sweeper? Yeah, arm. Of some, <laughs> some kind of arm that, that floats out. That's a safety mechanism uh, to make sure nobody's there. And behind it, you also have your uh, toe straps and stuff. So if you yeah. ever get stuck, you have front and rear toe straps. So mm -hmm. I hope you don't get stuck. But yeah. if we do, we've got something to yeah. 
rack to on the chassis. Yeah, at least by now we have two fairly proficient uh, <laughs> people with the engine. Uh, and also we have Badge as uh, one of our lifelines uh, dial a friend. So um, besides that, a big old diesel engine most likely if you have a large chassis. If you have a smaller chassis, it could be gas or diesel. Uh, actually, I take that back. Some of the larger ones could be gas as well, but I believe those are for the older models. They kind of wised up and all switched to diesel at some point. Um, you'll notice definitely a lot of electro electronics. That's what powers a lot of the lights and the control panel here. Oh, and obviously you'll get a stop sign with it, which you should replace or take off. Here's the fuse panel, and we are lucky we have uh, the whole thing here, which is kind of... Rare. It's not expected to have it this clean and so nice, but we do. We're lucky for that. Here is a... Um, a little uh, relay for the back lights, uh, the amber color lights, the master switch override, stop arm, uh, left red, um, flashing, all that stuff. That's probably going to come out. If you're not familiar with that, the, like a 12 volt wiring system, maybe you just don't want to touch any of the buttons or the wires just so you don't short anything. Um, you, can, you can also call the manufacturer of the bus and uh, all the wires have numbers and labels on them. Hmm. So you can get the wiring schematic a lot of times from the companies and then it, you can uh, you know, go through and actually figure out what, what that number and wire yep. represents if you need to get rid of it or, or use it. Yeah, and also sometimes printed on the actual wire will be uh, the actual words of what it is for. My last one, it, it's, it said things like, uh, rear brake lights. <laughs> so well, that's not that's not common. That, that you're lucky if you have it. Down below here, you will have some kind of a battery system, battery bank. We have three uh, 12 volt batteries in here, so that is nice. That'll uh, you know come in handy. Make sure uh, we get plenty of starting power. Um, like I said, on this one, for some reason it says to drain the air tank. I think Badge said that is for condensation. Mm -hmm. After you uh, drive the bus around, you just pull on that thing, you get rid of the air. Um, we'll go over, Michael's going to do a DIY thing, so we'll go over yeah. how, how to remove labels and uh, vinyl decals and all that fun stuff. But um, yeah, besides that, if you don't know what air brakes are, just look for some airbags uh, right about there um, when you're checking out buses. Air ride suspension is great. In the back, obviously you got your brake lights, blinker, reverse lights, and then up top you got your school bus, flashing lights and all that fun stuff. And then those are just running lights um, right there. So, do you want to add anything about what to look for? Uh, if, you, if, you are, if you don't know about school buses, do you have any tips? Yeah, look at the, I mean, did you show them the frame, frame rust? Okay. I'd be looking, yeah, I feel like that should be number one thing is besides engine and stuff, you want to look underneath the bus and uh, it should hopefully look something like this bus. If it doesn't, uh, I mean, it's not the worst, but this bus, I mean, still has like the original coating on it, essentially. I don't, it's amazing. Um, but uh, you would ideally want it to look exactly like this. This is a great example. Um, but if it does have some surface rust, it's not the end of the world. Um, if it's like any type of you know, rust where you could poke at it and stuff and start scraping stuff off. I mean, you might want to start looking for a bus. There's a million of them out there. Go find a better one. Yep. But uh, number one rule is a rusty bus is always going to be a rusty bus. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> There's a lot of upgrades you guys can make. Uh, you can change the tires. You can change something with the engine. The one thing you cannot upgrade is rust. Once you have it, you're stuck with it. Yeah. So, uh, anything else here? Oh, uh, I know there's a lot of people asking me, hey, what engine to get? This particular engine is a T444E International. It's a 2003. Another great one is the DT466. Uh, those are both fantastic. Stay away from the VT365, which is also known as the 6.0 liter in the Fords. Mm -hmm. International made, made the engines for the Ford uh, in this time period. Uh, you have a Mercedes and you yeah, like it? I have the Mercedes 900. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Um, you don't find them too, too often. Uh, you find them in the freight liners around, like, I think, 02 to, uh, I think, like, 08 or something. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I love it. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> the other good engines are the Cummins 5.9 and the Cummins uh, 8.3. Uh, there are many other options out there for engines. I encourage all of you guys who are interested in finding a school bus, do your homework, get on the... Um, 
uh, schoolie.net, get on the forums, ask around, poke around, type in an engine, uh, type in problems after it on Google, see what comes up, at, you know, go down to the local school bus yard, talk to the mechanics, maybe they can recommend something, stay away from something, but um, if you didn't see the other video, this bus was $4,500. Um, you can find it for less on the auction, you can find it for more at a reseller. Uh, whatever really fits your budget, fits your needs, your wants, your wishes, um, there is a bus out there for you, and they are dirt cheap. Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> you get a lot of bus for, for the price. Uh, these engines alone are worth... So I would say two to three thousand dollars removed from an engine uh, from a vehicle. Mm -hmm. So the engine you could say in a school bus is worth as much as the entire bus yeah. if it's properly working. The rest is just metal. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Um, if you notice it's uh, raining a little bit, um, we just tried to provide some helpful in information. Also give you a tour of a school bus before it gets uh, worked on. Uh, so hopefully that helps you guys. If you're searching for something or if you're just curious what on earth you get for a few thousand bucks. So uh, also check out Navigation Noir on Instagram. He's got the best bus in the entire universe. Well, almost yeah. until this one's done. Yeah. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video.